Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's fourth and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 24th of October. And we'll be able to send out beyond that with it. So Jeff Air sent East Down on Bumbles. Maybe much around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us um, well into the first half of November. I shall get on that for you in a moment, just to say that the first video release was our 6am UK weather forecast. We've also released the ECM at WF42 day forecast. And if all of that wasn't enough, well, um, the uh, weekend forecast has been released as well. So please check out all of today's videos and content. And thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that. Right, well, let's start in the tropical Atlantic then. We've still got tropical storm Sean. Knocking about, giving maximum sustain winds of 40 miles per hour. Sean will be disappearing very shortly now. So current position is just here. We'll be going post-tropical by tomorrow. And uh, they will be dis disappearing through the early part of next week. We've also got this red X, which is Disturbance 1. That's got a 70% chance of cyclone formation in about two days and a 90% chance of cyclone formation in the next um, seven days. So showers and thunderstorms associated with an area of low pressure located several hundred miles southwest Cape Verde Islands have become more concentrated and better organised during the past several hours. Environmental conditions are, are becoming more conducive for further development and a tropical depression is like to form within the next couple of days as the system moves westwards uh, across the central and western tropical Atlantic. That's the next one to watch and uh, we should be keeping a very close eye on that. Of course we will. Session temperature ticked down yesterday, but despite it being a relatively warm day in the CT region, but even so, we still uh, tick things down. So we're now sitting at 15.0, 15 degrees, 4.5 degrees above 61 to 99 average. That provisional to yesterday, to the 13th of October. The um, drops will start gathering pace, I think, from here. So just have quite modest and small drops in the CT over the past two or three days, but that will start picking up now. So uh, I reckon by this, this time next week, we might well see that into the 13th, possibly even into the 12th. I think we're going to bring this down really quite quickly over the uh, next week. So a rather entertaining drop in the CT is on the way, I think. And this is the reason why it means the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're on a commentary today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for commentary. We're already below average. Things are going to become even colder from here. We are going to have some very chilly nights coming up over the weekend to start next week. A gradual lift up in the upper air temperature through the middle second half of next week. However, that's associated with low pressure moving in. From the south. So whilst the upper air temperatures are going to lift up a bit down on the surface with potentially quite a lot of rain and a cold southeasterly wind, um, you know, I don't think we'll uh, see the daytime temperatures in particular uh, recovering much. Nighttime will probably become less cold through the second half of uh, next week, but overall a rather cool and wet scene, I think, through uh, the early part of next week. And they're just hovering, or the last part of next week, I should say, and they're just hovering close to average, really, as we're going into the last week of October. No sign of a return to the excessive uh, very warm weather that we have through this autumn so far. Precipitation wise, going to be a lot of dry weather for uh, the next few days up to the middle of next week and then after that we unleash what looks like quite a deluge with some very large precipitation spikes coming through there from about Wednesday, Thursday onwards next week and they carry on into the final week of October as well. So it could be quite a cold and wet end to the month. Temperature anomalies from the 14th, 22nd of October coming out below average, not just for the UK and Ireland, but for much of Northern Europe as well. Scandinavia standing out as being colder than average, some early snowfalls there. And down into Germany, below country, some parts of Poland also coming out with below average temperature. So definite cool down is taking place now after a long, long, long run of very warm weather. And precipitation anomalies from the 14th, 22nd of October, driving average for Scotland uh, and down in the south, and then a little bit wetter for more eastern regions. So rather variable with the uh, rainfall uh, anomaly there. 
latest win with that from Earth, no school dot net show about the north northwest winds have uh, pushed through now so low pressure is centered over Scandinavia We've got a ridge in the Atlantic uh, between the two down are coming those northwesterly to potentially even northerly winds so things definitely becoming cooler and or colder at the moment low pressure down here will eventually by the middle of next week potentially bring some uh, wet weather into the south right we'll start going through the chart data then starting with the uk met your run for midnight on um Wednesday, I've got low pressure in the Bay of Biscay there, and high pressure to our north east. We're bringing in this south east wind, which technically is a warmer wind direction, but I think it'll bring a lot of crowd and that we'll have a chill to it. And then this low pressure will start adding and heavy rain into the mix. So it's going to be a weather front that's kind of through here on this uh, allegation in the ice of bars, and that potentially brings a lot of wet weather with it. If we was a couple of months on, I've no doubt these south easterly winds combined with this low on the Atlantic would be a bit of a snowmaker, but of course it's only October, so we're just talking about quite <laughs> quite a lot of cold rain, really. And um, that uh, cool, wet weather carries on to the end of next week as well. This is midnight night Friday. Again, we've got this weather front down here, bringing outbreaks of potentially quite heavy and uh, persistent rain uh, with it. And up to midnight Saturday, again, low pressure just remains in control. Perhaps shed dim wind around a little bit more to the south from the southeast um, by next weekend. So that's a slightly milder wind direction. But still, basically, that low pressure is in the ascendancy. Icon again starts off at high pressure on Tuesday. But uh, that high carries on into Wednesday. And then by midnight to Thursday, low pressure trying to cover up. From the southwest, notice high pressure building over Scandinavia. Now, the ICON run is doing something different to the UK there. ICON generally keeps all that low pressure away to ourselves and just has the high pressure taking over across Scandinavia, which eventually pulls in like a proper east northeasterly wind. Um, and again, suffice to say, if this was a couple of months old, this would be a bit of cold easterly that we would have here. As it's only October, it won't be that cold, but that easterly will have a chill to it, I think, most definitely, with the upper air temperatures looking at the very least rather chilly, if not slightly on the cold side, actually. Um, add on the east north easy wind. If that comes off, we are going to be feeling really quite cold by the end of next week and into the weekend of the 21st, 22nd of October. That's far to get to with ICON. Again, high pressure dominating from Scandinavia, low pressure over Germany, and we are pulling in that east to north easy wind. Uh, across the country as well and show you the upper air temperatures with that so i mean we're not talking about cold east we're not talking about a beach of the east but there definitely will be a chill to those east to uh north east winds there and again as i said in a couple of months i'll be will be looking at heavy snow coming in from the east on those north east layers the gfs midnight run once more with high pressure dominating on a Tuesday, and then low pressure pushing in from the south and the west from Wednesday to Thursday, bringing heavy rain to southern and western parts of the country with this chilly southeasterly wind as well. Low pressures right over the top of England, Wales, and Ireland on Friday at the end of the week, bringing further heavy and persistent rain with it. Ahead of that, got this chilly southeasterly uh, winking things mostly dry up in the north. Into next weekend, low pressure across northern France. That could threaten more heavy rain to southern counties. And then low pressure breakthrough from the Atlantic. And so we lose the east south east wind and we pick up a westerly, uh, which is still not overly mild, though, because we're on the cool side of the jet here. The black line is the jet, and that's generally going to our south. So rather cool, but uh, wet weather coming in off the Atlantic with that one. Uh, that's Thursday, 26th of October. You'll notice there is yet another... Tropical storm and or hurricane moving into the North Atlantic. But I think that's probably going to be disturbance one. We talked about at the start of the video. Uh, and the uh, GFS Midnight Run eventually takes that to be Azores. But we keep things unsettled across the country up to the end of October. It gets us to Monday the 30th of October with uh, low pressure again. Well and truly in control. But GFS 6 then. 
It's much of much just for Tuesday with high pressure in control, low pressure down towards the Bay of Biscay. Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, he's after being that low pressure from the southwest. That could bring some heavy rain into southern and western parts of the country. Not much getting to the north and the northeast, though, because the high pressure of Scandinavia protecting things. Now, the Jeff S6 then is actually more like Icon. Um, by the end of the week, we're starting to take that uh, low pressure down into France, Spain and Biscay and um, it's the high pressure over Scandinavia that remains a driving factor and pulls in this proper east or northeast wind. Again, the upper air temperatures aren't that cold. We're not talking about a beach of east, but certainly chilly and uh, probably cold enough for showers to be windy across northern east and Scotland at any rate with a minus five Celsius iceberg. But that east northeast wind will have a proper chill to it even if the overall temperature is not that cold. Uh, we carry on up towards day 10, and then low pressure starts coming in from the Atlantic. So high pressure of Scandinavia retreats back into Russia, and then we go off and running into an Atlantic-driven spell of weather, which, again, is going to be quite cool because we are on the cool side of the jet stream. So just change the wind direction from cool east this to cool west northwest is Ben. Um, there. And, again, notice we have got the remains of a tropical storm and or hurricane disturbance one in the North Atlantic by the 26th of October. And eventually, we just keep things very unsettled up to the end of Jeff S6 Ed Run, which today gets us to Monday the 30th of October. If you're enjoying the video, please can you like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that. Why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell friends about Gareth's Web Visit. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. We've passed 17,000 subscribers. We're going to have a little bit of a celebration on tomorrow's live stream. So it's going to be live streaming from 6 p.m. Uh, tomorrow. So I'll have a little bit of a celebration stream. And uh, then after that, we're going to get back on the grind. We're getting back on the grind to uh, 18K. Thank you so much, everybody, for, uh, for all of the subs and all of the support over all of the years. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much, one and all. Okay, GM, again, with high pressure dominating on Tuesday, and then into uh, Wednesday and Thursday, we'll take high pressure Scandinavia, just about warding off these low pressures to our south and west. So GM also has the high pressure of Scandinavia becoming the driving factor at the end of week. That keeps the rain mostly just to the far southwest. We actually begin to pull in those east to northeast winds. They've got a chill to them uh, as well, but keeping things mainly dry, those areas of low pressure kept away to our south and west. Proper old easterly blast there uh, over the weekend of the 23rd, 22nd of October. Not cold because it's October rather than December, January or February, but even so, we will have a chill to it with that uh, wind and probably bringing showers in from the east with that as well but the real wet weather kept away uh, to our south until around day 9 10 and then the areas of low pressure start pushing up from uh, the south and that brings wetter weather more widely across the country and then the east gm at wf rounds it all off with a rich stilling control on tuesday uh wednesday well low pressure around biscay is trying to move North was Thursday. Yes, we bring that low pressure up. So the ECM is one of the more unsettled bottles for the middle of the latter part of uh, next week with low pressure bringing heavy rain into the south of the west in particular. Um, we don't see that high pressure of Scandinavia taking control like we do on some of today's model output over the weekend of the 21st, 22nd of October. So we just remain unsettled, rather cool and wet, really, with low pressure, you know, bring spells of uh, rain with it. So you can see on the precipitation forecast that uh, at the moment we've got wintry showers into the north of Scotland, rain showers around other western areas. Uh, the next couple of days are going to be turning drier under that area of high pressure. That carries on until around Wednesday, and then this wet weather starts gathering just to the south and to the southwest. And then that rain pushing northwards as we go through the middle part of next week. Heavy outbreaks of rain, especially focused on England and Wales there. Wednesday and Thursday, cold and wet. The wet weather eventually pushing northwards followed by further showers if not longer spells of rain into uh, next weekend as well maybe if high pressure takes over across scandinavia next weekend we bring the wind in from the east that will be a much drier solution than like this ecm run in particular we see it is almost like a 50 50 between weather going to be low pressure from biscay 
that uh, dominates the weather late next week or weather, it will actually be that high pressure over Scandinavia and those easterly winds. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. It gets us to the 24th of October. 18 members of the ECM ensemble, including the control of the operational run with high pressure to our north and northeast, but it's below pressure to our south and southwest that's actually bringing um, dominating weather and bringing wettest weather up from the south here we've got 17 with high pressure over scandinavia in control and that brings in the wind from the east the low pressures away to our cell so uh that would be so this scenario is like the ecm operation run that scenario is like icon and the gfs 6z and the gm so with the high pressure in control there uh over scandinavia scandinavia high dominating um that particular period and they've got 16 just here Again, with low pressure sitting over top of the country, bringing showers and or longer spells of rain. And then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets 29th of October, 23 members of the ECM ensemble. Look like taking high pressure into retrograde, retrogression of the high, centering it around Greenland with low pressure underneath it. That's very close to start to pulling cold winds for the east to the northeast there. Uh, we've got 16 with high pressure ridging up from the southwest. That will bring quite a bit of dry weather to Western Europe, could be a bit chilly. And then we've got 12 with high pressure sitting around Iceland, and around that we will be bringing in quite cold easterly winds once again. So a range of options, but again, there's no sign of a return to the excessive warm weather that we've had through the first half of this autumn. It does look as though the pattern has uh, changed, you know, we've had the pattern change, and uh, we are on into a genuine autumn now. CFS weekly finally beats the 500 millibar high tides broken down into week periods. The first week period takes from 14th to 20th of October. This week has low pressure to our east northeast and high pressure is in the Atlantic. And we bring the wind in from a northwesterly direction. So quite cool and um, driest weather, of course, is in the west. Now, the CFS has high pressure in Scandinavia then taking over. This is week 2, 21st, 27th of October. Scandinavian high takes over, low pressure gets pushed down towards Biscay in Spain, and that will pull in the wind from a proper easterly direction. So that could be quite cold again into uh, week two. Week three <laughs> he then takes a high pressure more towards Greenland ice, a bit of a retrogression of the high, low pressure cutting in underneath it. That brings the wind from more of a southeasterly direction, probably turning wetter, particularly in the south and the west, and temperatures probably starting cover as well however week four is interesting this is before to the 10th of november the high pressure then takes over towards greenland and uh, iceland and that goes the wind probably into an easterly direction and uh, by this point of course we're into november now that could start to pull in some really quite cold air from um from the north thing so all looking very interesting all of a sudden after so many weeks of warm weather could we be setting up like a a cold second half to the autumn. Wouldn't that be interesting? We'll see. Lots to get through before we can talk about that. Okay, we're done. If you've enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for doing that. Work, drop a comment, and let us know what you think about this and all our videos. And don't get to tell friends about Gals Web. We thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that for us. Right, I'll just tell you what's coming up tomorrow. We're going to have a 6 m UK weather forecast. We've got a seventh winter update. It's going to be, as well as all the regular stuff, it will be. Bit of a solar special as well. So that will be coming up from 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. And that will be live at 6. We will be discussing both the 6th and the 7th winter updates. So if you've got questions, then fire away. And I'll do my best to answer those for you on tomorrow's live. We'll also have a little bit of a celebration for getting 17k subs. Uh, we'll do a 10 to 14 there. And we'll show you some long range as well. So it's going to be epic, epic, epic. So I shall see you live at 6 o'clock. But before then... Or 6 p.m. I should say. But before then, um, I've got a 7th winter update to do later on this afternoon. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I'm going to be working away, but you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. And uh, for this one, that's all for now. And thanks so much.